Thanks, Tony. So um, my PhD is uh, focused on looking at the impact of the dissolution on changing uh, early modern urban um, spaces. Um, so this brought me to contact with the collections held here in the society. Um, the library really has an expansive collection of topographic materials, and these are divided into tens of different uh, specific collections, um, which are catalogued to different degrees. But you know, I, I can't possibly have to go into the more in that kind of detail. So I'm just going to go over a few, um, <coughs> a few specific uh, collections that I've looked at as part of my PhD research, and then I'm going to take you through a more specific case study, um, which focuses on Kingston and Long Hull. So the, the first collection is that of the uh, Coleraine Collection of British Topography. Uh, this was bequeathed to the Society by Henry Hare, third Baron of Coleraine, following his death in 1749, and is uh, comprised of seven volumes of 17th and 18th century topographic material, with primarily maps and plans, but there are also some uh, like early archaeological records as well. Um, and these are all organised alphabetically and by county. So I'll now go through a few examples of the more than 1,400 mounted prints uh, included in the collection. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, of course. Does that mean better? Yeah. So the, uh, the first example is this 1716 plan of Salisbury by William Nash. Uh, considering the kind of relatively early date within the, within the collection, this um, plan, uh, the accuracy, I think, is quite uh, I mean, that's not transferred very well on the screen, it's not done. But the um, detail is, is quite impressive. The, the standing buildings especially, uh, individually highlighted, as are the plots, um, including those buildings that are set back from the street front, and we don't often um, get that kind of level of detail. Um, you can also see the open water courses running through the streets of Salisbury there, which were still a kind of feature until the early 19th century. Um, this plan also includes two prospects of the town, the first uh, from the northeast, looking across the town to the cathedral uh, and beyond, and the second from the opposite side, showing the cathedral in more detail from the southwest. Um, the two, the, the first image up at the top there is fairly typical um, a, in, as a kind of inset within these kind of 18th century plans. And we have uh, <coughs> labelled all the kind of key landmarks going across the top, and there's a key ring in the You can see the quite the accentuated height of the cathedral spire in the centre there. And then the, the second image, the only kind of um, embellishment we have is a, is, a, is a boast of the height of the tower, um, which is proudly displayed as 410 feet. Um, so the second, the second plan I've got for you, which is happy slightly better resolution, is um, of York uh, and dates to 1736. Uh, it was in inscribed by the surgeon antiquary Francis Drake, uh, as you can see on the, on the legends at the bottom there. Um, this, the style is slightly more reminiscent of older 17th century plans, particularly um, those by Speed, which I'm sure some of you are uh, familiar with, in the, in the use of kind of uh, mills and illustrative material around the, the hinterland um, outside of the town, and then kind of key structures being shown in uh, elevation, especially churches and like, the more central city buildings. So, also uh, along the outside, you can see this is, this is very heavily labelled. This part, uh, we have all the kind of uh, contemporary city buildings on the left hand side and just at the top on the right, and then there's two sections, uh, which is Antiquities and Antiquities West of the Ooze, uh, and they basically detail all the medieval and earlier buildings still upstanding at that point. And just as an example of that, we've got the Minster labelled with the big capital E there, with a quite nice large elevation, and then on the right hand side you go across and you come down with the E, the close of the cathedral. So the, the final plan I've got for you from the Coleraine collection is this one of Worcester. Um, this is from 1741 uh, by John Doherty, uh, showing Worcester in its suburbs, including those south of the River Haven there. Uh, Severn, sorry. Um, immediately striking is its abnormal orientation, uh, with east-northeast being used to orientate the plan where we might normally expect north. Um, this is most likely, I think, with reference to the main crossing over the River Severn, 
um, which is kind of the most significant crossing for um, a little way around. And you quite often see this use of uh, a key topographical feature to orientate the plan for the, for the benefit of the user rather than the abstract concept of the north um, as we might expect today. Um, so just in the top right hand corner, I don't know if you can quite make out, but there is a battle going on. That is a uh, reference to the Battle of Worcester, which was the final battle from the English Civil War um, in what was it? 1651. <laughs> so if we just skip across, then in the bottom left hand corner you've got this quite large inset history and this is again, these maps produced for kind of public sale usually in the local area and kind of, um, an interested history of the, of the town so that takes us through from the port of uh, founding all the way through to the time of publication. Uh, it doesn't make any mention of the battle papers in the, in the top right hand side, which I thought was interesting and shows the kind of disconnect between the authors of the, the map and the, of the history. Um, but along the bottom, you have two quite nice um, engravings of Roman coins found lately in the town. That's all the context we get, unfortunately. Um, so, moving on again, we've got the, the Brown Portfolio, which was the, the second collection I had calls to look at. And, uh, these comprise 16 individual uh, portfolios, each made up of loose sheets and material relating to the topography of a particular county. Um, the nature of this material is varied, but broadly it's, uh, it's, it's mainly prints and, and drawings. Uh, so I've only got one example for you from, from this collection, but this is uh, close to my heart. This is a plan of Sheffield. Um, this is from 1771 and by the quite famous um, so the family of surveyors, the, the Fairbanks, this is by William Fairbank. Um, this was created uh, as, a, as an inset map for a, a much larger survey of Yorkshire carried out by Thomas Jeffreys and published in the same year, uh, a full copy of which is in the British Library. Um, the street plan uh, that you can see there would be revised for a later edition, but in, in this edition you can see the, the upstanding buildings that we saw on previous, the previous plans we looked at. Uh, as shown abnormally as blank white areas, and then the, uh, the kind of open areas are illustrated with various um, indications of, of use. So, if we look up at the top, we've got the um, Colson Crofts in the top right hand corner there, and you've got within the same kind of um, property demarcation, you've got areas of pasture and areas of kind of planted um, uh, agricultural. Plantation in Norway. These are kind of more symbolic. We don't know exactly how accurate these references are, and quite a lot of the time they are illustrative, but the, the specific distinction in that area seems interesting to me. Um, on the left hand side, uh, the, the Fairbanks were Quakers, so they made uh, quite significant uh, references to all the, all the places of worship within the town, both kind of conformist and non conformist, uh, which is another abnormal feature. And then bottom right, we've got the, the hospitals surviving through, which have been listed, which is Again, a nice um, feature. One of the good things of the, about the, the brown portfolios is, like I said, they're all loose leaf. Um, so even, um, well, across lots of them, we have uh, endorsements surviving and easily visible. Um, I know in some of the other collections they're highlighted in the mountains, but not always. Um, so this is a reference to the donation of the, this particular plan to the society um, by the great grandson of William Fairbank, the delineator, the original. So um, the final, the final uh, collection that I'm just going to quickly go over is the red portfolio, uh, or portfolio, sorry. Uh, these are similar in character to the, to the brown, the, the content is very similar, but they are much more uh, numerous and they comprise 62 bound volumes. And again, these are organised by county. Uh, the majority of the remaining plans that I'm going to take you through uh, come from the Yorkshire red portfolio volume. One A to K, as I go for it's all divided up. Uh, so, well, I'm going to start with a plan that is not from the Society of Antiquaries Collection. This is uh, held in the British Library and it is a 16th century plan uh, of Kingston upon Hull. This is the earliest surviving um, representation we have of Hull uh, and was commissioned by Cromwell as part of a series of plans of the um, East Coast ports. Uh, there's another one of Scarborough surviving that I've had a look at, but there's the only two I've managed to see so far. Um, so, 
we think it dates from about 1541, but there's not a, not a precise date on it, and it may well be based on a much earlier um, depiction, uh, though that, again, is kind of circumstantial um, suggestion. Uh, but whatever its origin, like I said, it's the most complete depiction we have of the town at this time, and specifically around the time of the dissolution, which is said as well, um, focus uh, with regards to my PhD. So, um, stylistically, this view is a bird's eye view uh, and is orientated approximately north, but like I said before, I think it's more the, the significant feature of the Humber that's being used to orientate the photo as a uh, plan as opposed to the, uh, uh, any kind of cardinal point. Um, you can see the, lo the key local settlements depicted along the left hand uh, side of the map there, as well. And I've got so we've got Beverly in the top left there, and then there's Cottingham in the centre, and then this is Barton on the far side of the whole uh, There was a key, uh, key kind of ferry crossing, which is now North Ferryby and South Ferryby, just a little bit further along there, uh, just off the edge of the map. Um, we've also got the uh, Charter House in the centre top. Uh, that's, that was the Carthusian uh, Priory, um, which was had its own walled precinct and was quite distinct from the town, as you can see there. Um, so coming on, there's a slightly closer image. Uh, okay, that's frustrating. That is a zoomed version of that, but it's not. Um, so we imagine that's the uh, that's the uh, charter house. Uh, this survived beyond the dissolution and continued as a as a hospital into the um, 16th and 17th century. And there's still a version of it um, today, um, but it's just street names now. But it was it was a uh, lunatic side of the 19th century. The, um, we can date this map to prior to kind of 1645-ish when the uh, when the friaries were dismantled. So we've got the uh, this is the uh, Blackfriars down on the bottom right side, which was not the Dominicans you might expect. Was more Castilian friary. But same point. Um, there's also some of the defences, the notable defences around the, the entrance to the hall there and the um, docks along the, along the west bank of the hull, and you see the ships with the, with the cranes disembarking there. On the left-hand side, we've got the uh, Beverly Gate, which is, um, kind of was, at least for most of the kind of early post medieval period, a, a, a striking landmark of the hull. Uh, you can see it's multi-story, and it's got this cracking bit of spire on the top of the hull. Uh, and then just outside, we've got, uh, again, this kind of characterization of the hinterland with the, with the mills there. That's, that's not to say those mills were situated immediately without the Beverly Gate, but rather that there were some, some like agricultural and other types of uh, activity going on in that area. There's also some gallows there, which is exciting. Ooh, missed. Right. So moving on, we're back into the Society of Antiquities collections now. This is um, Wenceslas Holler's 1640 um, view of Hull. Um, and the site actually holds two copies, both of which are out down at the front here, if anyone gets a chance to have a look. They're quite, quite nice, especially the first one, uh, which is this colour color version. Um, so, you can see this has been retrospectively coloured, so it's been engraved and printed and then somebody's mm -hmm. gone on and coloured it afterwards. There's no real um, kind of pattern to the colour, it doesn't really signify anything loosely with res. I assume kind of roofs and structures in the top side. Um, but they have also used the yellow to indicate the stone of the church, but then again, the yellow is like, used on the walls and <coughs> the notable features of Hollywood Sound was its red brick walls. So it's, it's not representative, it might be you know, the colorist was never seen the whole in person. Um, the uh, parish church you can still see dominates the centre of the uh, dominates the centre of the city, uh, well, the town, I suppose. Um, but the spires of both of the um, friary churches have disappeared. There is another church in Hull, but it's, um, at this point it doesn't have a tower. It will have a tower by the next day. But um, the tower you can see here is called the Tower of the White Horse. And it's a little bit enigmatic. But it's uh, turned into an inn of some point before the end of the uh, 18th century. Uh, 17th century, sorry. So, um, moving on. This is the other version, which is uh, very similar, really. Uh, in fact, it's identical, apart from the lack of colouring. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought it was just nice to point out on a different version, but to the, to the north. So again, we have this abnormal orientation, 
focusing on Beverly Gate, as I said, the main landlord entrance into the town. Um, so the reviewer is immediately orientated if they have a, uh, a knowledge of the town tour. And the, uh, the top image is orientated from the, from the Humber, so that's the main, just coming into the mouth of the Humber, so that's the main seaward um, approach to the town. But north of the north of the town there we have um, the Charter House, and as you can see there's now no longer a church, it's just a cluster of buildings, and that's the kind of form it had until it got overtaken by the suburbs in the, uh, in the 18th century. Um, later 18th century, sorry. So just up down here we've got the Verde Gate again, no longer does it have a spire, um, but it does have a jolly big flag. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's nearly there, I suppose. Um, oh yes, and it's uh, interestingly inscribed with, in Latin, this is the, uh, the donation of, my like, detail and the donation of the uh, plan to the society by Mr. Sam Gale, and the society staff. Um, so, the next example is an 18th century view of Hull, uh, engraved for the Ladies' Magazine. Uh, the Ladies' Magazine ran from 1770 to 1818, and this engraving was produced specifically for that publication. However, the depicted perspective predates this edition, so this is based on an earlier engraving, um, which is accompanied by a cracking great history along the, along the bottom and there's a copy both in the British Library and um, the National Archives. Um, but that, that version dates to 1745, so unless, uh, even though, sorry, this, uh, this view would, might not have been printed until the turn of the century, I haven't been able to identify exactly which edition um, this was published in. Um, but it, it could well, um, at the time of publication, have been a, a half a century old at the time it was, it was being shared. Um, so there's a couple of interesting, interesting points that are worth pointing out. We've got, um, firstly, this ship is the, is the key uh, similarity between, between the two different plans. The uh, scene in the background is much condensed and is, is, could, could be a little bit different, but it is the same, it's just uh, much less detailed. Whereas this ship is like stroke for stroke identical. Um, behind that ship, we can see all of these other ships. Um, and this is a real uh, reflection of the, the kind of economic prosperity of Hull at this point and the, the way it took off um, throughout the start of the, uh, the 18th century and through into the, into the early 19th century. Uh, and the results of that kind of increase in trade and in fishing uh, we will see in the next, in the next, uh, the next map. In the bottom left hand side, you can see this is a very similar view to the one we saw on the Holler plant, um, except for now we've got the, uh, the church dominating there and the slowly decaying um, line of the defences. You can see one of our mills that we had indicated earlier on in its actual location beyond the, beyond the west side of the town. Um, and this structure actually behind, which I've missed off the zoom a bit, is the new tower for St Mary's in the kind of northern side of the town. Okay. So the final um, plan I've got for you is this 19th century plan of Hull, and it shows perhaps, unsurprisingly, the most dramatic evidence of uh, development. The, um, the plan was produced in 1846 and was made almost exactly, it was made almost exactly a century after the previous view that we, we looked at. Uh, in that time, Hull expanded rapidly in the wake of its success as an East Coast trading centre and fishing port, and you can see the, the reactive building of the, uh, the purpose, purpose built docks along the line of the old uh, town wall there. So just to orientate you, this island, as it appears now, is actually the uh, old town of Hull. And previously, the, the brick defences kind of ran the length of the inside of these docks here with the moat along the outside. So they've just replaced that entire section of waste ground, I think, by this point, with um, this series of docks. Also, on the previous, I didn't point it out, but on the Earlier on, we have the, the blockhouses running up this side of the, uh, on the east side of the hull. Um, these are replaced in this period by the citadel, which is a really grand um, barracks. This uses, uh, reuses some of the stone from various um, medieval structures within the town. This also uh, reuses the bricks from the town defences and the blockhouses that run up this side. You can still see two of the blockhouses are kept as kind of corner towers within the citadel. Uh, and that, you know, it was quite imposing, but it was, it was never really used in anger. It was just a pretty grand barracks. 
Um, and yeah, this just uh, is a zoomed in version of that picture in a little bit more detail. Uh, you can see this is the church in the centre here. And it's actually nowhere near as big as it looks on all those other views, but that's, that's the way it's uh, Beyond the north of the town, I'll just go back to it, um, you can see where are we? Here. That is the Charter House as it survives. Um, just on this lot here, this like little room of buildings there. Um, yeah, next one. Um, okay, so that's all I've all I've got for you. But I'll just like to tell everyone to go and look at the go and look at the collections they've got in the in the library here. They're extensive and really reward a, uh, a look if you can. There's um, multiple points of access. There's the online catalogues, the card indexes in the library itself, and of course the knowledge of the librarians and stuff. But there are a few useful secondary material which I thought were worth pointing out. The most useful one I thought was um, Bali 1974, um, and that's available as a PDF from English Heritage Historical Review. Like that. It is a little bit dated, but it has most of the top graphic collections uh, summarised. So, yeah, that's all I've got for you. Thank you.